But let's talk about Dave Meltzer and his role in all this because a ton of listeners have been sending me audio and I've heard a little bit of it. We'll play some of it here on the show. We'll review it. But Dave Meltzer, as soon as this news came out from Fightful, that CM Punk, a return is imminent, discussions are underway. Dave Meltzer had some comments on it. I'm going to play you. These are from the uh, Meltzer Said What Twitter account, (laughs) which apparently follows the travels and travails and travails of Dave Meltzer. I will start with this one. Let me see if I could play this and if you could hear it, Jim. You know, if you just go in there and make amends, I mean, there's always ways to do it if you really want to do it. Going, doing it this way tells me that it's still a power play of trying to make other people look bad, you know, in the little game. You know, and the thing with the end of the game is... All right, let me stop it here because apparently this is not the beginning of it. There's a lot of audio here. Let me start. Let me go to this. This one should... We'll come back to that other one. I'm already gobsmacked. Well, what's the latest on Punk and FTR? You tell me what's the latest. How come I have to tell you? Because you know more than me. Well, I mean, I don't know if I know more than you. Okay, no, I'm not going to listen to that one either. Let's go back over here. (laughs) I'm over here now. Let's go to this one again. You know, if you just go in there and make amends, I mean, there's always ways to do it if you really want to do it. Going, doing it this way tells me that it's still a power play of trying to make other people look bad, you know, in the little game. You know, and the thing with the end of the game is, is that I, I don't believe that they want to work with them as much as they want to get rid of them, you know, and. He's saying that. Who, now, too many pronouns, pal. CM Punk and FTR are not truly interested in working with the Bucks and Omega. This is all a plot to drive them out of AEW. <laughs> By making them no, look bad. Well, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me make a cut. Number one, we couldn't possibly be that lucky. <laughs> Number two, drive them out of AEW. Where are they going to go? They're going to sit out in the parking lot and sell pencils out of a tin cup until somebody lets them back in the building. He say talking about making amends and blah blah blah. I didn't see anywhere where Punk said. Maybe he has. I don't know. He said, "Oh, I'd love to apologize to those guys for what." He has said, and it's been reported publicly, he has said to Tony Khan he's willing to come back to work and he's willing to work with these people. He didn't say he's willing to come back and be their friends. He has nothing to apologize for. If he wanted to, that'd be a bonus. But what is all this apologizing bullshit? When a guy owns a company and he's paying people this much money and they've had a fight, he sets them down he says, okay, I need everybody here. but." Who's willing to work with each other and who's not? The guy that's willing to work with everybody? Okay, I'll take you. You guys don't want to? Well, good. See you later. What the fuck? It's up to them to make that decision. If they say, okay, we'll be professional too, we're not going to apologize to him either, but we'll work together and we won't try to fucking break anybody's neck. Well, then that's fine too. I don't want them to be friends if I'm the boss. I don't care about their personal life. I want them to earn the money I'm paying them and draw me some money. And then it comes down to who's willing to do that and who's not. And nobody said they were trying to run them out of AEW, although that would be a wonderful fucking side effect. But it's ridiculous, the drama from these childlike minds and when anything that might potentially make them look like they're not the king shit of all starts coming to pass. They try to poison it. I'm sorry, go ahead. Let's hear more from Dave about the unprofessional power play by CM Punk and and apparently just Dax Harwood. I'm looking here what Meltzer said what had to say about this. Let's go to this. Like the idea of doing this. If they really want to work with them, you know all they got to do is is they got to go up to them and they see them every week at TV and just go, dude, you know, let's let's work together. You know, and (laughs) how can we work? (laughs) <laughs> that's all it takes dude let's work together well they don't see him every week at tv anyway because punk ain't been to tv since september i don't yeah, even know who he's working. talking about he's talking about ftr but let's go back to this we do do we put you over do we what can we you know can we do an angle um what do we got to do what do we got to do to make amends to all be team players okay wait a minute okay but and why does ftr if- have to make amends to anybody 
they got jacked out of the fucking belts from the fucking little whiny bastards when they decided to do their six-man thing. They never did the rubber match to put all the belts on FTR that was set up. Yeah, when they didn't want to do the money match last year. They didn't want to do the money match last year because it would have made them look like they weren't the greatest tag team in the world, which in their minds they are. So they left FTR standing there with their Johnson in their fucking hands and didn't draw money for Tony with that big man and help FTR get all the belts so that they would have that run successfully. And they're having those matches with the Briscoes and they're getting all the attention. They were a valuable commodity for AEW. That's why apparently they were never on AEW television and never put in a prominent position because they got so much conversation that the buckaroos were just jelly as they say and had to stop that. So why should FTR go up and say, hey, dude, hey, we're sorry, you want to work together? Fuck you. First thing he said was, hey, you know, what can we do? Can we put you over? That was the yes, first thing he no, said. No. <laughs> they did that before when they shouldn't have. Why would they do it again? Well, let's go back to Dave's thoughts on what FTR and CM Punk can do to make everyone else happy. And they do it in the right way. In time, you know, it'll work. In time, if they go and do it in a way where everyone goes like, you know, you're not really looking at doing it, you're looking at making the other people look bad, then it's only digging the hole deeper. And they know that, and everyone knows that, and that's why it's like so... That's why Brandon Cutler shouldn't have put that tweet up earlier. That's exactly why. <laughs> of course. You know, watching this, it's like, you know, you see through this stuff, and so... Um, you know, and, and it's going to keep going probably like that until well, they I think basically also the all issue... get together. Well, let me stop it there for a second. Dave, obviously jumping to assumptions here. You see through it all. It's clear that this is what Punk and FTR are trying to do. It's, it's clear as day, Brian Alvarez. What my buddies told me that I've never talked to anybody on the other side, but it doesn't matter because I know what they'd say. So... Yeah, let's can FTR and CM Punk come in and do valet parking and mow everybody's lawn and wash everybody's car and make amends for all the shit that other people did to them? You know what it's going to end up being? Punk's going to have to work with someone else, and the Bucks are going to agree to work with FTR as long as FTR put them over in Wembley. But let's go back to this. Even so much, you know, will will the Bucks work with FTR? The issue here is the... the uh... You know, the claim that CM Punk is willing to work with the elite. Well, of course oh, of CM course. Punk is willing oh, to work with the elite. That's is. not the issue. The issue is, do the elite want to work with CM Punk? <laughs> and it's not Wait just a, a matter minute. of... Wait a minute. Hold on here. Alvarez, you little train monkey. Hey. What the... Uh, how is he saying, of course, Punk, like it's an honor, like working with Kenny and the Buckaroos, or like working with Fez and Briscoe and Ganya? Punk is a bigger star, has made more money, has accomplished more, has been more places than all three of them put together. It's not an honor to be in the ring with them for him. It's not like that they drew more money or bigger ratings than he did when they were all in the same company together. How would that make it an honor for him? To, oh, with these big stars, it'll help me draw. If there is no benefit or pleasure or honor for CM Punk to get in the ring with any of these three except to play off the real-life angle. That's the only reason they're valuable in this scenario. Elsewise, he wouldn't even want to work with them to begin with because he didn't work with them before because he knew he couldn't make any money or have a good match with them. Now, the good match may still not be possible, but making money because of the real-life situation may be possible. That is why it is palatable, if not attractive, for CM Punk to get in the ring with either Kenny or Matty or Nikki. So I don't know what the fuck Alvarez is thinking, but maybe, you know, 140 fucking something pound gymnasts think alike. Hey, you know, I want to work with these guys, and they're they're unprofessional to not want to work but with me. But that's the whole game. That's the game. I they're mean, there was a the, there was a situation the here. That's the game they're trying to play. Is like where you know he's willing to work with them. They're the you know it's it's a game for you know like. They're the ones unprofessional, not me, you know, and it's just like, well, you know, I, I mean, if, if, the if whole I, thing started. It's a game. How it's is just it unprofessional game. if he's OK, I'll work with him and he will and they won't. How is the guy that will be an unprofessional? 
because Riddle it was me that. Uh, is he saying it's unprofessional because it was said because Dax said something publicly that they're willing to do this because Punk hasn't said anything. So it's all puzzling, but let's uh, a little more audio here. Thing started because somebody was unprofessional. And, I mean, and if you want to argue that the whole thing started because Hangman was unprofessional, which I'm sure would be their side, well, that's fine. Yeah, but, but that's, you know, that's that has nothing to do. With, that has nothing to do with the, the young bucks. The issue that happened at All Out was CM Punk being unprofessional. So you know, before it's, that, it's, uh, before that, the the, the, the it real okay, like little things happened, but the big thing was the promo on Adam Page, which was totally unprofessional, and, and there's no defending it. But because he was never punished which is one of the problems with this, is because he was never punished for it, it created a lot of uh, heat that got worse and worse and worse. If he had been told, if like he had done that promo and Tony would have said, dude, you know, you're going against the script, you're going to sit out for a couple of weeks. I think that at that point, either, you know, you know, he would have pouted and quit and gone home or he would have not pouted and quit and gone home and maybe this thing would have been alleviated. I got, I got another option. What if Paige, who did it first, had been disciplined or talked to or dressed down or chastened or sent home or sent to a Tibetan monastery, fucking observe a vow of silence for a year, whatever the case, then would Punk have done the unprofessional thing that Dave is whining and needs his pussy powdered about here in this case? One was brought about by the other. so. Why did Dave decide that Punk should have been punished for what he said about Hangnail when Hangnail wasn't punished for starting the whole thing on live television with the guy in front of him? And again, the Bobby Fish incident, the Bucks camp leaking all the stuff about Colt Cabana to Dave and Dave running with it. All these different things, it all, everyone who played a part in it points to Punk. (laughs) <laughs> since since Tony signed Punk and Punk came in and sold out the the fucking building in Chicago and drew the fucking giant rating for Rampage that they've never even approached since and then was on top for the first couple of million dollar gates they ever drew, the campaign has never ceased from the whiny little bitch set over there from Rancho Cucamonga to drive him away by pissing him off because they know that he will go off. And the problem was he went off on their face. But I guess it's probably not the first time that Matt or Nick have had somebody go off on their face. And, but it didn't happen that way. So it got worse and worse and worse. (laughs) And so now we're at this situation where, you know, I mean, it's like, uh, you know, I mean, obviously he's probably going to be back. And, um, you know, if they want to work. And he- They're all this upset about this. Wayne until Ace still comes back with him. <laughs> He's going to be back. There's ways to do it, you know. Um, but going in there and trying to make the other people look unprofessional is, is probably the worst way to do it. Unless- Isn't that exactly what they've done here? Is they've done everything they can to leak stuff to make it look unprofessional for over a year now? Yes, and and I must admit that Dave has done a wonderful job of being their house organ or mouth organ or two lips on an organ, whatever the case. Even though he can barely speak English these days and get a coherent sentence out, he's lost half his vocabulary. He's been able to see things from every perspective from the start of this as long as every perspective comes from Cucamonga trying to just kind of like pressure them out of the company. If that's the idea, you know, then we'll, you know, again, we'll have to wait and see how it all turns out. It's a really, you know, but, but I like extend like, like this is clearly not good faith because if it was good faith. Um, we wouldn't hear anything about it. They would settle it. They would settle it. And we would see an angle out of nowhere that would shock everyone or at least even, or maybe we would talk about it or whatever and know the angle was coming. And if that happens, that's fine. But, <laughs> As long as they're talking about it, it tells me that, um, number one, they have no deal to do. Who's they? Who's they that's talking about it? Well, the audio uh, stopped here. It appears that Twitter has stopped it. I want to say something. Well, no, but but I'm I'm just saying who's the they he's talking about that keeps talking about it. They, They wouldn't. 
If they were really going to do business, they wouldn't be talking about it. They'd just shoot an angle or whatever. Well, who's the they that's talking about it? FTR. Everybody involved with the EVPs. That's who that... So he's just saying they wouldn't be... Well, they're unprofessional because they're talking about it spilling the beans, trying to fucking screw the deal, trying to send it sideways because they don't want the guy around. They think Punk's trying to drive them out of the company. I guarantee you CM Punk does not want to become an executive in that company for the rest of his life. He probably wants to wrestle another year, year and a half, whatever this contract is, and get away from these fucking nutty people one time. Like Jerry Jarrett said to me when he quit the wrestling business at, at, in the 90s, he said, I didn't hate the wrestling business. I just hated the people I was in the wrestling business with. So Punk wants to wrestle and get the fuck out and go home and play with Larry. These weasels want to be there for the rest of their lives to sap Tony Khan of his fucking funds. So I don't see why they think he's trying to run them, maybe run them out in the eyes of the public, make them immaterial, diminish their reputation simply because he's bigger. That might be possible, but I don't think he wants to replace them. I don't see CM Punk becoming an executive vice president. I want to get your final thoughts on Dave and Brian Alvarez's comments on all this, but let me just say one thing because it involves me. Dave's jumping to a lot of assumptions here. And you heard him basically say it. This means this. This is happening, so this. Without a direct line. It's just Dave. And Dave, to the best of my knowledge, does not have cosmic consciousness. It is Dave just jumping to assumptions. It doesn't sound anymore like he's got consciousness. You know, when Punk put up his Instagram thing to respond to Dave, must have been two months ago now, I don't even know. I put up the next day after Punk took it down some of the sections from the AEW talent playbook. Because I thought it was important contextually for people to understand there actually are rules and barometers in AEW. Yes, and, and if people didn't see your tweet, it, it was the basically the code of conduct for AEW talent in media and interviews, which looks like, because the word team was mentioned a lot, it looks like it may have been cribbed from the Jacksonville Jaguars section of the Empire. Well, I put that up and it got a lot of reaction. Someone brought this to my attention and I went and checked it out and there it was on Dave's message board. It always comes back to that fucking message board. <laughs> Dave wrote that the AEW talent playbook stuff that I put out was leaked because someone was mad that Punk had to take down his tweet. That is absolutely false. And I say that as the person who tweeted the talent playbook, which I've had on my desk since late last year. It had nothing. I didn't hear from Punk or anyone involved with Punk who said, put that up, we're mad about it. And I didn't give a shit. I don't care if Punk tweets it or not. It was out there in the ether already. Dave jumped to an assumption. He has my phone number. He has my email address. He could have said, Brian, why did you put this up? Where did you get it? Anything. Didn't hear a word. Instead, he puts on his message board that it was leaked by someone who was mad that <laughs> Punk had to take down his tweet. It was and, leaked, and, to, me. And, it was and leaked also, to me in 2022, you moron. Well, yeah, well, besides that, just the way he phrases it, it was leaked because sounds like somebody, anonymous source, put it out in the middle of the night. You tweeted it with your name on the fucking Twitter account because it's your Twitter account and said here, in your capacity as operator and manipulator of the wrestling news, since this is in the news... Here's why that Punk may have had to take that down because it did violate when he answered the accusations of the fucking balding plumber and everybody else, it did violate their terms and policies. That's why the other cowards and dickless fucking pussies only do with a whisper campaign and nothing is ever attributed to them, except for Moxley. He just, he talks like most people fart, just at random, out of the blue, and it usually stinks. So he said whatever the fuck, but I don't think he can read, so they didn't really have him on the code of conduct anyway. But they, you didn't leak anything. You put it oh. out there with your name on it. I put it out there, and the reason I put it out there was everyone was saying, why did Punk take down his tweet so quickly? And my point was, well, actually, AEW prevents these guys from doing this kind of thing. Here it is in writing from their playbook. And I put it up. Dave jumped to an assumption. He's completely wrong. 
I'm sure he won't apologize, but Dave should apologize because he made a wrong statement about me, even though he didn't. Could you guys me. work together? Do you think you could work? I mean, there's some way that it could be done. Of course, you'd have to, you know, you go up to him and say, hey, Dave, can I put you over? I want to challenge Dave to a match at the Garden. The Olive Garden! <laughs> no, uh, but then it end, I just want to say, because a funny little ending to this, everything I put up on Twitter from that playbook ended up verbatim in The Observer without any credit to where it came from. The talent playbook somehow got out this week. Somehow, the great Brian Last put it out, you fucking dope. So that's what I want to say. Hey, don't call him a dope. Dave's jumping to assumptions on a lot of things. I just witnessed firsthand to me, he jumped to an assumption about why I tweeted something. He very easily could have asked me if he was concerned. And by the way, Dave, if you want a copy of the playbook, let me know. You know, you could, you could autograph those like I did the Russo restraining order. We'd give the money to charity. Charity begins at home, you know, sometimes. That, that's a great idea. Final thoughts on Dave Meltzer and Brian Alvarez's comments about, again, another apparent attempt from Tony Khan and CM Punk to iron things out, get things together, get the team back together, or start some sort of process, and here we go again. If I wish I had final thoughts on Dave Meltzer and Brian Alvarez, meaning I'd never have any more, but unfortunately, I have a feeling they're going to come up from time to time. But again, these children have never been in the wrestling business. They've been in their little bubble of their indie world where people thought that they were the shit with no S at the end and were lining up to smell their farts. And suddenly they get in the real world in over their heads with guys that outdraw them, guys that can outwork them, guys that can outtalk them, and guys that can outfight them. And they don't know how to handle it because everybody's told them how great they are. And they are to a certain section of the populace. They love that competitive tumbling and aggressive parkour and combative Cirque du Soleil. But to most people, out of the 10 million that used to watch wrestling every fucking Monday night, now we've got a couple million left and a third of that watches their program. To most people... Their little acrobatics and their little sissy-ass fucking bullshit is offensive because it's not wrestling and it's not even goddamn pro-athletics. It's community theater is in their minds. They're in the real world now, and if they're going to make big boy money, they ought to have to put their big boy pants on and get in there and work with people that they don't like and aren't friends with and didn't get their jobs for them so that those people will do everything but lick their taint to keep the EVPs happy because they would have never gotten a fucking high-paying job in wrestling if it wasn't for being friends with them. And Tony fell for all of that. Nakazawa, Cutlet. I mean, the list goes on. We've been talking about them for four years and all of their various relationships and stoogification so jungle stooge jungle stooge it's up to tony to decide whether he is running a professional sports franchise or a goddamn daycare center where everybody's supposed to be friends and you know what if you get in a match with a fucking guy you don't like and he potatoes you give him a receipt Unless you're afraid he's going to kick the shit out of you then and know that he can, in which case, take your fucking potato and swallow it. Yeah, the Bulldogs and the Rougeaus worked that Survivor Series match in 88, the last match of the Bulldogs, because the Bulldogs wanted to be paid. They knew if they fucked around, they weren't going to get money. Yeah. The problem is everyone knows you're going to get money if you stay home. You're going to get money if you wrestle. You're going to get money if you only wrestle your friends. You're going to get money if you refuse all creative. <laughs> you just get sent home. If it, oh, in, in one specific case, if you tell the boss, no, I won't punch another one of the boys as soon as I see him, and then you fucking go and see him, and you punch him as soon as you see him, and then you tell people, well, I just told Tony that so he wouldn't <laughs> keep me home. And then Tony said, well, I'm not going to fire you if you punch that guy. I'll just send you home and continue sending you your check. Boy, for that deal, I've, there wouldn't have been a son of a bitch conscious in some locker rooms <laughs> I've been in if they had that deal. You mean I can punch that guy and you're just going to send me home and pay me? Why, wow, he'd have hit the floor quicker than fucking you could hiccup. There's the show. Turn the cameras on in the locker room and institute that rule. Just 
chaos will be great. That's the thing. And and I'll 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 wrap it up in a bow with this. I hate to say I told you so, but since I'm right so often, I have to. We've been saying this for four years now. These indie-minded children cannot handle the big leagues or the big time, and they can't get over for the big audience to make the big money, and they're all going to have nervous breakdowns. And look at what's going on and has been going on. So there you go. Another case of there you are. 